Okay, so, let's say, it's a what if thing, dude. Will, Will, it's a All what right. if thing, dude. Okay, you okay. got, you finally, finally get a boyfriend. Not only that, but it's like, fucking defying the laws of physics, and you're getting like, a fucking real life, like, fursona thing. So like, you're like, fucking, you're fucking the weird, impossible, like, fantasy creature. So it's like I mean, I would also be trip. okay with the, I would also be okay with a girlfriend as yeah, long yeah, yeah, as she yeah. either a had a dick or b was willing to use a scrap okay, on. Yeah, yeah. What, okay, yeah, whatever. Let's say okay, fine. You get your fucking, you get your fucking, <laughs> okay, you get your fucking beautiful persona, fucking they friend with big floppy, big floppy anime titties and a big fucking horse cock and they're fucking furry shit. Whatever you're I prefer into. Prefer knots actually. Okay, whatever. Whatever you're... <laughs> okay! God damn it, you motherfucker. Okay. You bitch. Okay, you fucking cock-ass dick wheel. Okay. So, you get the fucking being of your dreams. You get your fucking significant other. But, for the rest of your existence, every single solitary yes. piece of pornography that you ever look at is turned into lolly porn. And not furry shit when you do it. Well, not if only... I have the being of my dreams, I no longer need porn. All right, all right. That's fair. What if you get the being of your dreams? They're a beautiful person. You enjoy them. They're, like, wholesome. They complete you in all the right ways. But they're super hot. But every single time you actually have sex, they turn into a fucking child. And then you got to, like, stop because you're fucking a kid. Would he still? Would he still? Would he still be willing to date them and do all that shit? Will? <laughs> that kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> okay, so so you would not just abstain from sex with your significant other for the rest of the time. You you just wouldn't date them. I I don't know. That's a very hard question. <laughs> because <laughs> it's like uh, okay okay if what it if... was someone that i truly like if it was to a point where basically like i i truly cared for this being this individual person or whatever other or other like i i would be willing to give up sex if it was someone that i truly cared for see i'm glad that that's where your brain went and you weren't just like nah keep fucking up <laughs> No, I would who would even debate that? Um a fucked up person and you would get fired from the podcast. That was a test, Will. Your job was on the line and I was ready to press a button and fire your ass. You said the wrong thing. The debate this was, was a different job would I interview, fuck bitch. the child. <laughs> this was a job interview, what motherfucker. The fuck? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the edgiest and gayest podcast on the internet. This is Hell and High Tales, slowly, anally fisting our way into your fleshy hearts. I'm J.W. Evans, and this is my co-host, my chubby buddy, Will. How you doing? Hello! <laughs> welcome to the one-year anniversary special, motherfuckers. <laughs> what a way to start it. Oh, uh, Will. Ah. Will, when you wipe your ass, do you fold the toilet paper into triangles first? No, I fold it into squares, actually. Well, okay. I, I think triangles are more aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> yeah, but if you do it in squares, you get a solid three wipes out of it. Actually, yeah, solid three or four, depending on how many times you fold it. <laughs> or, hey, at least I'm not, no matter whether you fold it into squares or triangles, as long as you're not one of those degenerates that just clumps it up into a fucking ball. Yeah, that's weird. That's, <laughs> that's weird. such a waste of fucking toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> that is. That, that's also, I also feel like it's less efficient. It's just not, this is not an efficient way to wipe your ass, dudes. It's not. Just don't. Don't do it. Just don't. Don't be a fucking heathen. <laughs> you fucking scoundrels. Not wiping your ass right. It's like, it's not hard to not be a fucking degenerate. You just gotta, like, do some fucking toilet paper origami and get, like, a fucking pigeon or some shit to wipe your You're ass not with. wiping your ass with an origami crane. Are you even truly wiping? Yeah, yeah, that's the fucking real shit here. <laughs> 
Let's just all just, let's just throw away, let's just ban toilet paper, and everybody has to get a bidet. Toilet paper's banned, and if you get caught with toilet paper, we're fucking arresting you. <laughs> if you get caught with toilet paper in your possession, you get sent to the concentration camp. <laughs> you got a fucking $200 fine, you gotta install a bidet. Yeah. The the, you can only uh, the wipe by shoving is... a big fat water fuck. You can only wipe the... your ass by paying a fucking blast toys to hydro pump your ass clean. <laughs> no, it's not even that. You just get sent to a camp with a bunch of other people, and the consequence is you're no longer allowed to wipe your ass. Well, no, so you're no, just that's... destined to walk around with ah! a crusty, sh- with a shit crusted ass for the rest of your life. No, no, no. That's a punishment. But like, instead of the bidet system, what it is, everybody just hires like a fucking blast toy, or like a Ludicolo or some shit. To just fucking stand next to your toilet, and when you're done, you just fucking stand up, bend over, spread your cheeks, and they just fucking hydro pump your ass clean. That's how they use Pokemon. That's how they do it in the Pokemon world. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Have you ever seen a fucking roll of toilet paper and fucking Pokemon Sword and Shield? Fucking no. They're all fucking, <laughs> fucking. Have you that's ever why seen it... that toilet and Sword and Shield. And that, that's why fucking Inteleon looks so fucking gay because he's used to fucking. That's why he shoots water out of just one finger. He it, it's so it pressurizes it in more of a specific line to shoot the shit out of your ass. <laughs> yeah. It's not even just a bidet. Like he does it out of his finger. He just sticks it up there and gives you a little enema. <laughs> just clean it out. I mean, he's also got a long, long tongue too. So you know, just, just in case. Oh God! <laughs> All right, question of the hour: Inteleon, smash or pass? Uh, definitely pass, because I'm not a fucking furry. I don't want to. Fuck. Aren't you though? I'm not. I just happen to associate just fifty percent of my podcast. You just happen furries. to be engaged to a furry and have a furry as your best friend. Yeah, I'm just surrounded by, and I have fucking uh fucking tit pics from a fucking furry I'm friends with on my phone. So I'm fucking surrounded by furries everywhere. It's fucking frightening, but uh. It's fucking... But do you have a persona? No. Not a furry. Uh, okay, Heather made one for me once and drew it. So at one point, I... Heather. So at one point, Heather actually drew a persona of me, but it's as a joke because she is super small and short. She made the. Was it persona... a cat? No, she made me a ferret. That also makes sense. And then made it really small, and then did a drawing of it on her back, and it's hung up and framed on my wall because it's creation from the love of my life. But anyway, back to fucking Pokemon wiping our asses for us. If you look at all three of the starters, you know, it makes sense too. Because Cinderace, fucking soccer player. Okay, fucking uh, Rillaboom is a fucking musician. What, what the fuck is Inteleon's job? They're a fucking bidet system. Fucking duh. Okay. But I was gonna go with it's a drag queen, but you know that works fucking, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we talked enough about drag queens on the last episode. I don't want to. I don't want to think about drag queens of the days right now. I'll have war flashbacks. <laughs> you got. <laughs> what if that's what happened in my sleep? Maybe 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 after I went to bed, my fucking date just fucking busted out a fucking Inteleon, and they just fucking waterboarded my anus. You know, a Pokemon <laughs> that hadn't even been conceived yet. I like how your problem with that statement isn't... It, your problem with that statement is that it was a Pokemon that wasn't out yet, and not the fact that I just said the line, Waterboarded my anus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is everything about that sentence is perfectly normal? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, fuck. But no, I am... I find uh, the animal traits in bipedal creatures to make them less attractive, so I do not find... I don't really find any Pokemon to be attractive. <laughs> so, that is, that is not, not a thing. Even that, not even that sweet, trubbish ass. <laughs> There's fuckers out there who jack off the trubbish. I fucking know it. Fucking out yourselves in the comments, you fucking fools. I know for a fact that there's porn of trubbish, but I've never seen it, and I don't want to. Uh, just fucking let's just There has to be, well, yeah, but I for don't sure. there, there, dare there's look porn for of it. Every Pokemon, like even like at this point, even if it's something that nobody's actually attractive to, somebody is still going to draw porn of it because it's like. 
It's like part... Because they can. Yeah, it's because you can. Because as long as the possibility for that piece of art exists, someone is going to grasp it. And at this point, it's like embedded into the anime community and into the art fucking community to make lewd shit of everything. Even if it's not actually something you enjoy being lewd, it's like, yeah, but it's just the thing you do. They're going to firmly grasp it in their hand. Like, people as make well porn out of fucking Pepsi cans. <laughs> people fucking make lewds out of a Pepsi can. It doesn't matter what the fuck you are, you're getting looted. Like, that's... I saw porn of a Tide Pod once. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> the worst, I think I sent it to you. Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> the worst part, it was actually kind of hot. <laughs> No, see that that is a thing that actually that, that actually brings me to a pet peeve because I hate it when people use fan made art as an example of how a character is hot. That's bullshit because it doesn't fucking matter if you if there there is billions of fucking beautifully talented fucking artists who specialize in making lewd shit. And those people can make anything look fucking attractive. So it's bullshit to fucking use fan art to say a character's attractive. If the original art, if the original art of the character wasn't attractive, then the character wasn't fucking attractive. It's the fan art that somebody made that was attractive. It's that artist's interpretation that was attractive. That fucking character was never hot to begin with. Fuck you people who fucking say that. I don't want to see another fucking... Uh, fucking hot moments of Nami from One Piece, and then you click on it, and every fucking thing is just a generic, shitty, shittily cropped piece of fan art of Nami. Like, nah, that's bullshit. No, if you're gonna make a fucking video about fucking hot pics about Nami, you have to fucking be honest and take screenshots of the shitty proportions of bad camera angles in One Piece. <laughs> Jesus. Jeez, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> what? It's pissed me off for years. <laughs> uh, but come on, don't, don't... Is that not a thing that's bugged you, or are you just totally cool with that? Do you disagree? Do you have a, a counterpoint, Will? I mean, guess not, but... <laughs> Just Fuck you, that's my counterpoint. You just, that's just a random weird JWism that's just never crossed your mind before until I said it. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, no, fucking, my cousin did that to me once. Like, they were, like, fucking talking about how hot they think Velma from Scooby-Doo is, and I'm like, yeah, I don't think Velma from Scooby-Doo is hot and then they're like oh that's bullshit I'm a fucking go onto Google Images and I'm gonna find some fucking fan art and fucking head tie of Velma and you're gonna fucking learn how you're wrong and I'm like no fuck you if you have to find a head tie and fucking fan art of a fucking character to show me they're attractive they were never that attractive <laughs> that's like fucking characters from like fucking uh like Total Drama Island, none of them are attractive because their proportions are fucking ridiculous because they're fucking too abstract to the point they're not attractive. Like, it's fucking a fan art of things that is made to make some things attractive. In fact, most of the time it is. Like, fucking Tifa from fucking Final Fantasy VII wasn't really attractive in 99% of the game. 99% of the game, she looked like fucking shit because it was a fucking a PS1 game and they didn't know how to make character models yet in the fucking overworld for Final Fantasy until the next game. So fucking... <laughs> but there's lots of really, really good fan art of Tifa. <laughs> N64 Lara Croft. But yeah, like, there's... I mean, Tifa's a bad example, because fucking Tifa, you know, they had better fucking character models later. But, you know, it's like, people can, you know, use their imagination to figure out ways to make anything fucking hot if they try hard enough with fucking artists. Which is scary, because artists make shit look attractive. That should not look fucking attractive, okay? I should never fucking look at a fucking, fucking jar of Nutella and, th and fucking think of a fucking... Hentai manga someone made about a fucking Jonathan. I put my dick in that. 
<laughs> but no, it's like you look at shit and you're like, man, I saw someone draw that with fucking fucking killer waste once, and I don't know. <laughs> this jar Never of Nutella. Kids. Never stick your dick in a jar of Nutella. Yeah, yeah, don't. Not even once. Yeah, yeah, it's not not a good idea. <laughs> Just trust oh me, don't do it. <laughs> uh, it's really arbitrary, like, what characters in media I find attractive. Usually what it really is, is it's, like, less to do with how aesthetically pleasing the character, like, is. Like, they have to be aesthetically pleasing enough, but usually, like, the biggest thing is, like, a deep emotional connection I have with that character. It's like, man... I just, this character gets me, I'm emotionally attached to this character, and now I'm gonna go on to nhentai.net and look up fucking porn comics of them. Nice. <laughs> like, that's how my mind works. <laughs> Which is weirdly wholesome, I think. <laughs> Hold on, let me jack off to the emotional bond I feel. <laughs> you saying you have a crush on a cartoon character? <laughs> Bruh. Fucking weeb! I mean, I am a weeb. This that half this fucking podcast has been talking about weeb shit. Half the fucking art of you and the thumbnails, you fondling a fucking Vaporeon. So like, yeah, we're fucking. Weebs. I am not fondling it. We, we've been over this. <laughs> we have been over this. If you would like to hear a discussion about this topic, you can go watch episode two of our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Plug. Oh, uh, plug of the thing you're currently watching. Yeah, fucking, what is this, WWE? <laughs> oh, God. No one that watches this fucking watches wrestling. <laughs> I tried to talk about wrestling shit on here once. I lost four subscribers. <laughs> so, let's change this. <laughs> oh, shit. There goes another ten. We fucked up, Will. Fuck, I'm sorry. I said the WWE word. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, God. Fucking people are so fucking picky over anyone mentioning shit they hate for two seconds. <laughs> uh, yeah. they, they show that I like, they said something I don't agree with. So now instead of being a, a reasonable, mature adult, I have to hate it. Half the shit I watch, like, fucking dudes disagree with me, like... The main, like, anime YouTuber I listen to is Digibro, and he says shit that either pisses me off or I disagree with all the time, but I like him because his points are always very well-put points, and he's funny, that's what I give a shit about. I care that the points that are being made have valid reasons behind it, and that the person is entertaining while they're making those points. That's what I give a shit about. I don't give- I don't you know, like- that's why, like, Anime America is a great channel. I don't listen to Anime America a lot because I don't feel like I'm gaining anything from it. Because it's like, yeah, this there's no opinions of this that I'm like, man, I never would have thought of that. So, you know, I just, even though I like them, I don't check them out a lot. I usually, I usually like content where it's like, yeah, this is... Here is this either opinion I disagree with that is put smart, or here's an opinion that comes from a different place or just has some, you know, interesting value. I need a utility behind the thing I am watching. <laughs> but then again, that's just me. I turn everything into a fucking chore. Like, everything I like, I find some fucking way to ruin it. And fucking, like, <laughs> I'm like, ah. I'm gonna watch some anime, but I'm not just gonna watch anime. I'm gonna make a fucking 70 ep- I, I can't just watch Cardcaptor Sakura. I gotta make a- I could only watch it if I'm planning to make a 70 episode series analyzing each individual episode and then reiterating the plot in a silly voice. <laughs> I turn- I turn everything into a fucking chore. I can't just play Earthbound. I need to grind to level 80 before I fucking meet a territorial oak so I can feel cool. Uh, I'm a fucking terrible person. Why can't you just- Your audio just went totally out, dude. You there? Bruh? Bruh? Super. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, your audio fucking died. You killed your own audio. <laughs> I just pulled my headset up. <laughs> <laughs> Professionalism. Yeah. 
Uh, actually, that's a fun thing to talk about. Like, this podcast is one year old. Okay? We had a big gap for, like, six months where we weren't running because of, you know, a lot of personal shit, you know? At first, it was done all with my fiancé's laptop and edited on there. Then she went to college, and it's like, well, she has the laptop. It's a little hard to, you know... She was too busy to do the podcast until eventually I got a laptop that was capable of running this shit myself. Uh, but this has been going on for a year. Uh, it's all and... Heather's fault. <laughs> God damn it, don't blame Heather. She'll cry. <laughs> I'm She's kidding, a it was a joke. Being. We love you, Heather. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> God damn it. I just had the most cartoony swallow in the universe. Like, you know, like, when a character's nervous and they have, like, the gulp sound? I just did that <laughs> in real life. <laughs> Holy shit. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even think that was a thing that actually can happen. What the fuck? But you're, like, in a weird position because you're, like, a guest and, like, a co-host in my videos a bunch. So, I don't know how much about my channel you're even aware happens, but, like, what is your view on how this channel's gone in the past year and how the show's gone? Um, I don't know. It's It's been interesting. At this point, I'm just kind of like, like, it's cool that it's part of a channel and everything, but at the, at the end of the day, I think I just kind of realize, I just kind of look at it like, you know, whether or not we become super popular or get a you know millions of views or anything and is at the end of the day it's just you know once a week or every other week it's just me and my buddy sitting down and just bullshitting for an hour yeah it's definitely that, that's, just that's definitely having a good why, time that's definitely why i wanted to bring this show back because part of the issue is when you make videos and they do terrible and you put a lot of effort into it it really, you know, at first it's whatever, but it starts to get to you after a while. Like, there's some videos I've done before on this channel where it's like, it didn't, I didn't do that video because it's like, I'm having fun and it's like a fun event. It's like, I did that video because I wanted, and I did the things in that video because I wanted to make a fucking video and I wanted to make something that would entertain people. And when a month passes and you realize no one gave a shit or no one was entertained by it, it feels like you wasted a lot of time that you could have been doing other things. It feels like, yeah, I had some fun making it, but I wish I didn't spend all that time working hard on it for, you know. You know, you need to get back enough from the videos you make outside of, like, viewership and that's why I brought this show back, because even when we do, like, episodes that perform terribly, it's still fun. Like, I'm still having a, a fucking great time. Like, we had this series called the Hashtag Bad Jokes Vlog uh, that went on for, like, two years. It was, like, 70 episodes, and it performed and single handedly abysmal. Saved it, our friendship, Yeah, though. single-handedly saved our friendship. This vi this series performed abysmal. Some of those videos had zero views on them still. And probably still day. do. Yeah, some of them still do have no views on it. But in recording that series, me and this cool dude over here that I'm pretending to point at, even though he's not really next to me right now, it saved our friendship, it got us to hang out a lot more, it got us to talk a lot more, and, you know, it was it was fun. Some of the things I quote most and think back about most are these fucking stupid videos we did together, because the content in itself, the fun we had doing the videos themselves, was already fun enough that it justified making it. And I brought this back because I'm like, I need something that I get enough back from making it, regardless of how many people watch it. I myself need to have the most fun from making this thing. And a lot of things I thought would be that. I thought doing Let's Plays would be that. I thought, you know, so, but a lot of them weren't, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, however, this show has been a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got us talking a lot more, because once I moved, we didn't, like... Ironically, we went a long time without ever talking to each other. And then I was really desperate to have, like, a co-host to bounce things off of for the show I was starting. 
uh, you know, and then me and you, we started hashtag bad jokes together, and it was a lot of fucking fun, it saved our friendship, it got us to hang out again, and we both ended up liking each other a lot more, and in me bringing, me starting the show and then bringing the show back, we had a long gap where we didn't talk for a long time because I fucking moved, and we're both adults now, and we're both busy a lot, so there's a we lot of gaps. We have adult shit to do. Yeah, so there's a lot of sucks. gaps where we don't talk a lot, or, you know, where we, you know, maybe don't respond to messages a lot, or when we do, it's like, yeah, cool, or, ah, oh, sweet. You know, it's not a conversation, it's just being like, ah, oh, okay, or it's just like sending a meme, but when we start doing the show again, it's like, hey... We're fucking talking all the time now. It's like, you know, I never fucking left Minnesota. So, you know, ironically, yeah. hashtag bad jokes saved our friendship. And then Hell and High Tales, you know, it like rejuvenated our friendship, you know. It was still, you it know. It kept us from drifting apart. Yeah. Which I think that, I, I, I honestly, I feel like, I don't think we ever would have drifted apart. Because I feel like the fact that we went like... You know, like, fucking three years with only talking to each other once in a very long while, and not in depth. You know, all it took was just us calling each other on Skype, and we are just talking and bullshitting like I never left. So I don't think anything ever would have made us really drift apart, because I think it only really is one call for us to, like, act like nothing ever happened. That's fair. We're fucking glued together, Will. The second your cock went in my ass, you were stuck with me for life. <laughs> That's what he said, because I was just about to say, like, I mean, we took each other's virginity. I feel like we're obligated to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't, it's going to be really awkward. I mean, the actually, that being said, it's kind, it is kind of funny to think about, like, how many people can say that they're still not only friends with, but, like, on good terms with this person they lost their virginity with, yeah, I too, lost, nowadays. Yeah. yeah, I lost... You know, it's like usually either you lose your virginity to your significant other that you stay with, or you're just, you know, not fucking, you know, friends anymore. But I lost my virginity to, like, my best friend, and I'm still, like, fucking best friends with him. It's like, whatever. And the time has sucked, but we're still like, yeah, it sucked. What else? It just, like, gave us like, the best <laughs> running gag ever. Exactly. <laughs> At the time where the... I did the wooloo maneuver out of there. <laughs> Patently named by me about uh, maybe an hour and a half ago. <laughs> uh, just rolled the fuck, just noped the fuck out of the situation. Just yeah, rolled just away. Fucking, like, <laughs> it's funny because we're both assholes in a sense. Because you weren't a very, like, I'm like, because it sucked for me. And then also I was an asshole because then I like stopped, dropped, and rolled out of there. And then I'm like, I'm tired, and then ran away. <laughs> So I'm an asshole. <laughs> I mean, I was also an asshole back yeah. then, but less. I was all, not only an asshole. I was just like, general, genuinely a <laughs> shitty person uh, back then. Like I've had a I lot mean, of personal growth since that time. Yeah, I mean, we're both we're, bo we're we're both kind of assholes, but you know, we we've, we've both done a lot of growing, and you know, it's whatever. <laughs> we're assholes, but at the end of the day, we're still good people. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm annoying as. Fuck, and I'm a fucking like parasite, but god damn it, I grow on you. Just like a parasite. <laughs> or an STD. <laughs> hey, that's ironic because we're talking about butt sex. Ha! <laughs> oh god. Didn't Fuck. even use a condom. I mean, what STD are we gonna catch if we're both fucking virgins? <laughs> Depression. It, shit, is that why I fucking... Is that why my therapist diagnosed me with clinical depression? <laughs> that I catch uh, it for... <laughs> at least you can afford to see a therapist. I can't anymore. I can't anymore. The school paid for it. Once I moved, I was fucked. And not in the fun way. <laughs> uh. I've been getting fucked fucked for 20 years of my life and only three of them were in the fun way <laughs> oh god kinda same <laughs> uh. Oof. Uh, that's some fucking shit people tell you everybody always says that like ah you know 
the best times in her life or when you're a fucking kid and when you're a teenager. I wish I could go back to the fucking good old... Fuck Bullshit. you. Fuck you and your good old days. My childhood was shit. My teen years were shit. My fucking life in the fucking past three years, like, and like, you know, some of the, you know, some of the Minnesota times, like, my... In the past three years, it has been way better than, like, all of my life previously. Like, you know, I can cherry pick lots of amazing moments, you know, like, all of hashtag bad jokes and all the moments with you from Minnesota. But if we're talking, like, my mental... I mean, all the moments with me from Minnesota. I said all of hashtag bad jokes and a lot of the moments. Okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. That works. Maybe, maybe not all the moments for you. <laughs> There's this fucking awkward time where you just straight up I... fucking spit milk at a person and then looked at me dead and died. You're like, I'm glad I did that. That was awkward as fuck. I still don't remember that. I know. I can, That's why like, I can see myself doing that at that point in time, but I still don't remember it. Uh... I mean, we've both done shitty things, you know. Uh, like, like I said, I was a shitty person at that time. I bit you once. <laughs> I straight You up caused fucking... a lot of physical harm to me <laughs> on several occasions. Not just with my You dick. could create... If you went back and, like, went through all the Bad Jokes episodes and even some of the shit we did before that, you could fucking create, like, an hour-long montage of you just bringing physical harm to me i mean i created like a half hour montage of all the best moments from bad jokes and a lot of the ones i put in there were me beating the shit out of you I, I mean, you okay. once suplexed me onto my own bed <laughs> that's impressive i was able to suplex you holy shit i'm a scrawny man but fuck it dude i'm like I might be a dangerous fucking person. There's a solid... I am a fucking... What do you think? I am like... I'm a nice person. I always have good intentions for everybody and for the world. But I'm also clinically fucking stupid. And I am fucking impulsive as shit. So a lot of my fucking split-second decisions are... Not fucking good for the world, accidentally. I never mean harm, but I accidentally cause it for people. <laughs> Sometimes. I never mean harm, he says, and then immediately fucking tackles me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, there's one fucking time where, uh, like, okay, I was watching this fucking last week tonight video, and uh, John Oliver... Fucking, I'm gonna throw him under the bus. This fucker says, hey, you can say the phrase, here comes the monkey, before any bad news, and none of the bad news will seem bad anymore. I take that to heart. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna start fucking saying this before I do anything. So I fucking <laughs> vault towards my cousin's room, because I was staying with my cousin at the time, I kick open the door, scream, here comes the monkey, at the top of my lungs, I bolt towards him, and I'm, you know, I'm, f I'm a fucking athletic dude when I want to be, when I give a shit, I fucking bounce and flip over to the bed, like, tip of my toe hits it, and that tip of my toe is just enough to do an additional springboard and lunge forward, and I fucking <laughs> smack this huge ass fucking chalice of almond milk off of his bed frame all over his fucking precious guitar and then i just start beating the shit out of him <laughs> because <gasps> what the fuck because i saw a video where john oliver said you could say here comes the monkey and do anything and say anything and it will still be funny and i thought <laughs> it would still be funny because i yelled here comes the monkey <laughs> But what I got was a cousin that was pissed at me for wailing on him for no reason. And note, this fucker, like, he's just sitting on his laptop with headphones in. He's just watching a movie. I come in. He's pulling a headphone out and pausing it. But while he is doing so, I am already on the second springboard off the bed and lunging forward at him. Full 
fucking throttle and hitting him and pushing this almond milk out onto the guitar with a huge splash with the milk and a bits of almond pulp flying through the air. And we're poor at the time, so he had no fucking ability to replace this fucking acoustic guitar that he just splooged almond milk all over. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, um, John Oliver, you fucking lied to me, first of all, and also, I'm a nice person, but also... I'm literally the kind of person that will hear John Oliver say something like that and be like, I'm a fucking tested in the most ridiculous bullshit way possible. <laughs> and not <laughs> at all take the time to think of the consequences of my actions. <laughs> uh. I'm just imagining, like, you sitting in a fucking jail cell. <laughs> the officers are just like, <laughs> the police officers are like, why would you murder this person? It's like, well, you see, officer... I before I did it, I said, "Here comes the monkey," and they just start <laughs> chuckling. Uh, I was like, it was like a hearty "Here comes the monkey." Too. I'm like, "Here comes the monkey," and they're just like pausing and taking their headphones out, like, "What? I'm already fucking over there." It's like, <laughs> "Here uh, comes the motherfucking monkey." Uh, did not work, dude. Did not work. I don't even remember why what John Oliver was talking about. I just remember that that's the reason, that's the inspiration I fucking ruined one of my cousin's guitars, because that guitar was fucked. They couldn't get, it was like a wooden acoustic guitar, and the almond milk was stained and soaked in there. Oh. Was, I ruined it. I ruined that guitar. No. Forever. <laughs> All because I saw an episode of Last Week Tonight <laughs> and wanted to test John Oliver's theory. That's, that's sad. Yeah, it really is. There, there's not much you could say as, like, a fucking, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> I am so sorry. I'm sorry, I said here comes the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> you should have, should have seen it coming, okay, God. Uh, my first, I, I've, I've literally looked at him like, I, I thought if I said here comes the monkey, it would have been funny, and they're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> The fuck is wrong with you? A, a lot, I want to beat your ass. Hey, uh, excuse me. Two out of three of my therapists said I was a perfectly normal human being. So, who has the fucking psychology degree? <laughs> How did those fucking two out of three therapists... Did they talk to you for more than 30 seconds? Uh, yeah. They talked to me for months and months. The only therapist that didn't say I was normal was the one that bailed after the first day. <laughs> uh yeah it was uh uh their names were jaron and sabrina uh they talked to me for months and months and months uh once a week uh told me i was a perfectly normal person <laughs> okay here comes the monkey <laughs> Here comes the monkey, it's the one year anniversary special, dudes! God. Uh, <laughs> fuck. I, uh. I don't even know how to respond to that. Oh, what's some other, uh. One time, uh. I was fucking. Okay, you don't know about this shit. I don't think. You might. Uh. Tap and I. Uh, my cousin and I, a group of my cousins, uh, before we quit drinking, because one of them had a problem and I was the guy enabling that problem, uh, before we all quit, uh, we had a bunch of last hurrah parties, but we're all, we're all really fucking stupid. So we all were terrible at estimating how long it was until we moved. So we had like 16 last hurrah parties. <laughs> uh, fucking one nice. of them. I'm like messing. With this dude's amiibo, okay? My cousin Kevin's amiibo figures. I'm like, checking them out. We're all fucking trashed. We were all, like, taking, drinking Jaeger bombs and shit. And my fucking cousin's my like... God. My My fucking cousin uh, Kevin is like, Don't touch my amiibos! Tap! Get them! 
and Tap starts, like, walking after me like he's gonna get me. He has his arms outstretched like a cartoony I'm a punch you pose, and he's walking towards me. But I'm fucking, like, trashed, dude. Like, I'm, I'm like, gone. So I'm, like, I, I hear him say, get him. I look over, he's coming after me. I legit think this guy is about to beat the shit out of me. I think they're 100% serious. So I, I'm, like, not facing him, though. I'm, like, glancing from the side. I turn and spin around full fucking force and punch him as hard as I can in the fucking side of the face and knock him the fuck down. Oh, my God. God. And then I'm still scared. Fucking fight or flight is like full force. I'm like, shit, <laughs> he's gonna come back up and whoop me. So I punch him as hard as I fucking can while he's on the ground in the fucking kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and it's funny because he told me he's like he fucking i punch him and he fucking like from the punch and a combination of me punching him in the side and him trying to fucking turn after the punch to get away he's fucking rolls lamp is on his back his hands are fucking outstretched he's like bruh bruh we good we good (laughs) you win (laughs) (laughs) you win (laughs) we good and, Please have mercy. And it's what is great about that story is he told me like sometime later when every uh, when shit calms the fuck down we're like tired. He's like you know when you first punched me I was actually about to get up and beat the shit out of you for punching me and legit fight <laughs> you but after the second punch I was done. <laughs> <laughs> So actually, if I didn't punch him the second time, I actually would have gotten in a real fight. But because my fucking response was, I gotta get him. (laughs) If you put somebody down, you make sure they fucking stay down. (laughs) Double tap, motherfucker. (laughs) God. It was fucking lunacy. And then fucking... Okay, it keeps going. I get fucking destroyed, okay? I'm like fucking a vegetable. They're dra- they drag me to the bathroom. They fucking sit me on the ba- on the toilet, you know, and they're like, okay, here, you can puke, whatever. I'm like, they leave. I'm sitting there for a while, and I'm like, how the fuck can I get off this toilet? I can't even stand, because I'm like too dizzy. I don't think I could stand right. I'm like, wait, okay, what if I fucking flip? And land on my feet. So that way I don't have to try to stand up. <laughs> so I fucking... Oh my like, God. I'm like... I managed to pull myself up on the toilet and sit. I like do the like cartwheel motion. And I flip. And I crash the shower curtain. Pull down the shower rod. Knock all their shit over. <laughs> and I'm like... I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, fuck. I flipped my way into this situation. I guess I better flip my way out. So I flip again. <laughs> And I flip the fuck out of the fucking uh, bathtub. And then I start military crawling my way out because I still don't think I can stand. I'm fucking crawling and I'm butt ass naked. <laughs> and I'm crawling. Military I'm crawling. Butt ass naked. Getting... And I'm, I'm fucking getting rug burn on my dick because it's dragging on the carpet, but I'm crawling. I look off. over. I look to the left. All I see, they're looking at me because I hear some noise, you know. They, they hear some noise in the shower. But all of a sudden, while I'm military crawling, I stop. A fucking single feather drifts by my face from the left. I look to the left. I see my cousin Tap and my cousin Kevin standing over a mattress holding a katana sword with pillows massacred and a fluff flying everywhere. And they're looking at, and I'm looking at them like, what the fuck? Fuck! And they're looking over at me, butt-ass naked, with a fucking shower curtain over my shoulder, and they're like, what the fuck? Why were you naked? <laughs> oh, God, fuck. At what point in this story did you take your clothes off? Oh, God, that's a whole other fucking story. One second. Fuck. What, were you guys having an orgy? <laughs> One second, let me pause this shit. Okay, so earlier, what fucking happened, uh, my cousin Kevin is really fucking spooked by gay shit, right? So, what I do is, 
I'm like, <coughs> he's being like an asshole, because he's an asshole. And he's fucking, like, burying me. We're all playing Mario Party, by the way. We're all drinking Jaeger bombs and fucking wine, and we're playing Mario Party 10. And I'm fucking, like, like, ah, oh, fuck you. If you keep talking shit about me, I'ma fucking do a gay-ass fucking striptease. Fucking, what about that? And they're like, oh, you better not do a fucking gay striptease or I'ma fucking pig belly you so fucking hard. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, that's not how it works, motherfucker. I gave you an ultimatum. I said, if you don't stop talking shit about me, I'ma start stripping. So either you stop talking shit about me or I'ma start stripping. And he's like, no, you better not fucking strip or I'ma fucking hit you. And I'm like, no, you can just stop talking shit. And I won't strip. And he's like, if you fucking strip in my fucking house with that fucking gay ass bag of shit, I'm a fucking pink belly you. And I'm like, well, now he's still talking shit. So if my word has any meaning, I have to fucking start stripping. Uh, I think at this point I was already shirtless because I take my top off. Uh, whenever I play Mario Party, at some point it always happens. I get really serious. I take it off and I chuck it. Uh, <laughs> at this point I think I can vouch I, for this yeah yeah at one point I took it off and like punched you but I take it off uh, at, maybe either at this point or before this point uh, they're like yelling more like oh fuck you how dare you fucking take a piece of clothing off I'm gonna fucking beat the shit out of you and I'm like stop talking shit and I'll start putting clothes back on until you stop talking and he's like oh I'm gonna fucking hit you and I'm like if you keep throwing it to hit me I'm gonna fucking pull more shit off he keeps fucking talking shit so I pull my pants off I fucking hike my fucking underwear up my ass and fucking roll it up so it's like a fucking thong and I start fucking shaking my ass at him but he's getting fucking furious he's losing his shit <laughs> he's so mad uh so what he does he fucking pulls back and this guy is like a foot taller than me and like 200 pounds more than me this is a big fucking dude he fucking as hard as he can slaps me right in the gut leaves mm -hmm. a bright red handprint for 24 hours Jesus. I'm fucking out of breath. I can't breathe. But I'm not about to let this fucker win because I said if he didn't stop talking shit, I would keep fucking stripping and dancing. He didn't stop, so if I just let him win here, then he wins, you know? <laughs> Obviously. No fucking shit, duh. So, you know, I get up. I fucking hike my shit back up. I'm fucking holding my stomach because I'm fucking in pain. I start shaking my ass out of more. He's like, I'm gonna fucking get you. I'm fucking wedge you so hard. So then I start shaking my ass harder. Tap pulls out their phone and starts recording to send to their oh boyfriend in Michigan. Because, they, you know, they start recording to send it to their boyfriend in Michigan as a joke. Like, look at this shit going on. Because they're, you know, they're, they were not all there. They were inebriated. They weren't fully thinking about it. So I'm fucking shaking my ass. Fucking, it's being recorded. Kevin comes up. He doesn't hit me in the stomach again. He doesn't pink belly me again. No. He... Get, he, he's like, I'm a fucking wedge you. He grabs me by the underwear with one arm, pulls so hard. Not only does all of me come off of the ground, because he's so strong he can just one arm me, but he rips the underwear clean off the entirety of my body <laughs> with how hard he pulls me. Not only do I, he pulls me off the ground. Uh, my feet aren't touching the floor. Then he gives it an additional yank, rips the underwear off, uh, then, right before the video recording on the phone, uh, ends, and it sends a messenger, my dick pops out of the underwear, because it got pulled off, so, like, plopped out dramatically, because I'm also in the air. And then, <laughs> Tab stops recording, sends it, sends it to their boyfriend, but then they're like, oh, wait, no, don't look at that, his dick's out. <laughs> but then, then Tab's boyfriend comes back to him like, it's too late. It's too late. And then, I'm in the air, though, because he yanks me in the air. It pulls off. I'm in the air now, and I'm falling downwards. I plop on the fucking couch and butt-ass naked. <laughs> and we're still in the middle of playing Mario Party. <laughs> Please tell me this video is somewhere that I can see it. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, it's not. It's not. Oh, uh, damn it. Oh my I was, god! I, I was, un I mean, I was un hilarious. Uh, it would be, it'd be a, a little illegal if it's still low because I, I don't know if I was actually. I think I was still barely seventeen, so I think that that is an uh -oh. illegal video if that's still out there. <laughs> but 
I think I was 17, Oops. so. I think. Fucking, uh, when you said that your uh, Kevin fucking slapped your stomach, I was me the time that you, me, and Ta- uh, Tap were hanging out at your place, and they fucking punched my knee and, like, almost <laughs> broke their fucking hand. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Uh, those last hurrah parties were fucking nuts. Uh, at one point, everybody started fighting and wrestling. Having a pro- Kevin and uh, Tap were having a pro wrestling match in the fucking bedroom. The same bedroom where the katana shit happened. I'm like, And was hey, this in Minnesota or was this in this Michigan? Was in, this was in Minnesota. All of this was in Minnesota. Uh, by okay. the way, during these last hurrah parties is where I got pissed and told everyone we fucked. Because at this point, I was already mad because you were like, we agreed we would tell nobody, but you kept doing the bullshit where you're like, at one point you looked at Tap and you're like, I'm not going to say what happened because I promised I wouldn't tell. But me and JW did something someday and ever since that day, we've been closer than ever. Oh, God, I was so fucking cringy. You were saying (laughs) shit like that to people, and it pissed me off, because we promised we wouldn't fucking uh, tell anyone, right? And here we are talking about it in a podcast on the internet. Well, here's (laughs) here's what happened. Here's what happened. You said we wouldn't tell anyone, right? I didn't want you to tell anyone. You know, we made an agreement. But then you started... Not saying we fucked, but you started basically saying we fucked basically everybody. Basically telling everyone. Yeah. yeah, and I was pissed the fuck off. I'm like, how dare he fucking, after we agreed, you know, I'm a fucking bury this fucker for it. But I didn't uh, at first until I was fucking incredibly inebriated. <laughs> and then all of the fucking 16, 15, however many last Raw parties, I fucking brought up us fucking. But ever, because I only brought up when I was drunk, Tap never knew if it was the truth or not, because they were always like, you only... How do I know you're not saying this just because you're drunk? <laughs> <laughs> Does um, she know now? Or, sorry, do they know now? Yeah, yeah she knows now. But uh, what fucking occurred is I was pissed. What made me finally decide is I was pissed that you did that. So I decided, okay, you know, I'm drunk. So I'm like a little loosey-goosey anyway, so I can't keep my mouth shut. And also, I'm pissed at you for fucking implying it happened anyway. So I'm like, I'm a fucking bury this dude. So I not only told them the full fucking story, but I said, I'm a fucking... Tell this fucking story and bury this fucker to every fucking person I meet. And that's why every fucking person in our friend group hears the fucking story. (laughs) Because I'm a petty bitch who's mad about a thing you did fucking five years ago. Like, even everybody that we fucking sat with at the table, at the lunch table in in high school? Uh, I don't, I don't count them as our friend group anymore. (laughs) So I don't uh, think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. So wait, who who in our friend group that have you told the horrible story to? Um, I think Maeve. Uh, Nick knows, and Nick has told a lot of people. Uh, I told a former manager at one of my jobs. I told all of my coworkers <laughs> of my current jobs. Um, <laughs> they know that we're cool now, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always hype okay. you up after. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love but it. But I fucking, uh, obviously Heather knows, because Heather knows literally everything I've done ever. Uh, yeah. I guess I don't have a lot of friends, so I guess you don't have a lot to worry about, because that's, like, it. Same, to be honest. Oh, like, I've told a lot of people. I've told, like, all my friends, but I don't have a lot. <laughs> It turns out when you scream, here comes the monkey, and start beating the shit out of people, that turns people off. <laughs> That's kind of a turn off, yeah, it's a bit. Uh, it scares people away, I guess. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Couldn't tell you, man. It doesn't uh, make sense to me. Oh, but the wrestling story. They were wrestling in the bedroom with the katana. I'm like, wait, while they're busy grappling on the ground, I'm a run to the kitchen loop around because you know it's on the kitchens you can enter two sides i'm gonna run in there loop around keep running i'm gonna keep building momentum and i'm gonna work my way back up there running full speed bust in there jump on that bed bounce off and do a fucking springboard flip onto him 
So I do it. I fucking run in there, fucking bounce off the bed into a fucking elbow drop and fucking elbow drop their ass. But fucking Kevin uh, moves out of the way. So I just hit tap and no one else. Oh my god. So you beat this poor fucker up twice. <laughs> but I'm smart. Because I know if I keep running, I can just come back in here. They're going to start wrestling again and I can fucking bounce off and hit him again. So I do it. I fucking run in there. Back to the kitchen. Back to the room. Onto the bed. Bounce off with momentum. Elbow them both. Fucking. But I get like mostly tap. A bit of Kevin mostly tap. Like my legs hit hit kevin but my fucking actual elbows hitting tap i fucking God. roll away i wooloo maneuver away fucking run back to the kitchen back to the living room back off the bed elbow drop back to the kitchen back to the room back to the bed elbow drop i fucking keep rinsing and repeating this shit fucking six times in uh fucking tap gets up he fucking smacks the boy he's like i'm fucking done and they walk out of the room they're like i am not getting fucking elbow dropped again they leave kevin was on the floor still uh i'm on the bed uh you know because i was about to bounce off and taps like nope nope i'm done they leave kevin and kevin is assuming that because tap said they're done that everyone's done but I'm still in, like, fight or flight. I'm still like, oh, this big-ass motherfucker's about to get up and fucking hit me. <laughs> so I jump high up in the bed, and then the second jump bounce off into another elbow drop before they can get up. Uh, they're, like, part of the way up, but not quite enough. And they're still bent over, so they're, like, you know, a lot of their way it's leaning forward. The way I land, my elbow perfectly hits like the back of their head and pushes us forward towards the heater <laughs> and then wow. i fucking a sandwich and smash the side of their head into the fucking heater on the floor they fucking get busted open they stand up i look at them and they're like i'm so proud of you little brother <laughs> and i'm just like uh cool <laughs> They're just like, I'm so fucking proud of you, you're fucking man now. <laughs> I'm just like, I guess I'm fucking got away with busting this dude open scot free, cool. <laughs> he's fucking, thank God he's a dumbass. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, the fact he was fucking hammered probably helped. Yeah, dude, everyone was. We were fucked. Oh, at one point, by the way, we put our clothes back on and we're like, let's walk to the gas station. <laughs> oh, no. We fucking go to the gas station. I'm like singing and yelling about butt sex. Let's go subject normal people trying to go about their day to this bullshit. It was also like midnight, mind you. So like <laughs> cashiers did not want our shit. It's also funnier, mind you, the whole time I'm underage <laughs> and we're out in public. To buy energy drinks to make more Jaeger bombs. So, like, <laughs> it was a mess. We did that. So, you also that. don't drink anymore, like, to this day after yeah, that? To, or? To, to this day, I don't. Any particular reason, or just uh, out of I curiosity? Mean, I mean, I shouldn't have in the first place, because, like, you know, my mother was an alcoholic. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Very abusive alcoholic that, like, beat children when she drunk. So, you know, it's like... Not only is it, like, kind of an iffy thing emotionally that I mostly did just because it's, like, I wanted to kind of be in with the group and the fun times, but it's also, like, you know, fucking alcoholism There's, is yeah. on both both of my parents had alcohol problems, so, you know, I really yes. shouldn't drink, you know. There is a legitimate, like, risk yeah. there. You know, like, at the time, it, I, I guess it was a little different because I actually didn't have access to it outside of those few, like, events, but, like, as a grown adult who actually could go out and, like, buy booze, it, it would be very irresponsible for me to ever do so. Because now it's like, okay, now if I started that shit, it could easily become a problem. And I just really fucking shouldn't. So I just stay away, I've just stayed away from that shit ever since. Once we moved up here, we just fucking quit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, fucking, <laughs> at least 
I have probably better, like, drunk stories than most fucking dudes who actually drink. Because <laughs> just the few times I got fucking hammered, I did fucking a lot of shit. Yeah. Uh. Come on, Will, did you ever um. fucking... <laughs> fucking get in a drunk fight with your cousins? No, I've actually never been drunk. <laughs> Um, it's not necessarily, like, by choice, per se. Like, I want, at one point, at one point, I do want to get shit-faced drunk, like, in a a safe environment, just to, you know, to see what it's like to be absolutely fucking hammered. Um, but the thing is, like, it's really hard for me, because I'm a big guy, so I have a pretty fucking high tolerance when it comes to things like alcohol. But on top of that, it's hard to get to like force myself to drink enough to get to a point where I even feel anything. Cause I don't even think I've ever felt tipsy before. Like I've never actually felt the effects of alcohol because I fucking hate the taste of most alcohols. <laughs> so it's like either drink a decent amount of something that's really fucking strong and just like try and force myself to yeah. drink it like or find something that's, Oh, this drink is really fruity and doesn't taste like alcohol at all. But you have to drink, like, four gallons of it if you want to yeah. fucking feel anything. <laughs> it's basically not even alcohol at that point. Like, yeah, it's definitely... Like a nice hard lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, this isn't even fucking booze. But, like, it's just, yeah, definitely... It's just shitty-tasting lemonade. Yeah. What's the point? But, uh, yeah, it's def- definitely, like, make sure it's, like, a good environment with, like, cool dudes, like... Because fucking, you know, quit drinking entirely. But, like, you know, the few times I did, I was with, like... You know, it was a dope situation. So, like, that's why, like, even though I quit entirely, I still love talking about the fucking few times I did drink because it's like, yeah, those fucking 15 or 16 fucking quote-unquote last hurrah parties, those were the fucking shit. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Like, you know, because they were all fucking fun times. I don't know if I'd call that a safe environment, though. (laughs) I might have made it a dangerous environment. (laughs) I mean, he didn't get hurt, so, you know, I mean, was, everything's I mean, fine. I did get hurt. I had a fucking hand imprinted into my stomach for... Well, I mean, you didn't get any permanent damage. <laughs> that we know of. I might have that given we know you, of. I might have given permanent damage. I fucking <laughs> smacked the dude's head into a fucking heater. <laughs> Oh, God. You punched someone in the face, and then right, in, and then in the kidneys. Oh God, that was fucking. Uh, fuck. What a fucking night. <laughs> Ugh. It's fucking funny, cause like, uh, getting crazy drunk makes you really sleepy. So slowly, we also got really fucking sleepy. <laughs> So it just ended with, like, us all just, like, passing out and being, like, delirious, fucking sleepy, grumpy dudes. Uh, Nice. Ah, I don't remember which night it was. One of those nights, uh, there was car problems, and I ripped my button-up shirt off and tossed it to them so they could fucking fix a car. I know one of those nights, that's why it was topless. But again, this was, like, multiple nights. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we were really bad with time, so we repeated this a lot. <laughs> uh, nice. I feel like it's funnier, because I was still, like, by you at this point in time, so it's funny that you never heard about any of this. Right. Oh, fuck. Was this after? Like, was this post-bad jokes or pre-bad jokes? No, this was when bad jokes was still going. This was, like... The, the it was the last hurrah party because uh, this was the summer where we were packing to move. Oh uh, yeah, this was after you moved. I forgot you fucking moved too. Yeah, that's why you didn't know. Oh yeah. This was oh right, I remember moved. now. Yeah, I forgot you moved to a different place in Minnesota. Then I just bailed yeah, from Minnesota. That's when I had to. That's when I moved to had to move to Fergus because I think I'm I'm sure I've told you that fucking story. Yeah, you, you've told me a bunch. It was a whole fucking thing. I was gonna say, like, there's no way I didn't tell you of all. Yeah, yeah, all you definitely that fucking told story. Me. But like, well, how, how did I even get to this fucking topic? <laughs> I don't know. 
We'll have to watch it back and see yeah, the fucking segue that fucking... got us here. We we started off by talking about how we wipe our asses, I think. So I don't know how we got to here. <laughs> I asked you how you wiped your ass, and now we're talking about me punching the fucking. Well, first it started drunk. with how would you fuck an alien? Uh, that, uh, I that's technically labeled as last episode. The fucking shit fucking talk is what started this one. Oh yeah, fair enough. We can't let the audience know that this one time we recorded two episodes <laughs> in the same fucking thing, oh, no. or else we might be held to some kind of some level of integrity. <laughs> fucking, we have no. This is the edgiest and gayest podcast. Slowly, anally fisting our way into your fleshy hearts. We have no integrity. We say that for like half of the fucking videos. Okay, we. Oh, I opened half of the videos on this fucking channel talking about fisting. So I don't think we're known for integrity. I think we're known for bullshit. But I think our bullshit is fucking top tier bullshit. So I'm hoping some people like our bullshit. <laughs> Quality memes. And I'm hoping they wipe their bullshit by folding it into triangles first. Like fucking adults. Like civilized people. And that's how we're gonna end this episode. Thank all of you for watching our one year anniversary special. I hope you subscribe and like this video. Uh, if you like anime and want to hear me bitch about anime or anything, you can follow me on Twitter at FlashyJWAnime. And if you want to hear me bitch about Lucha Libre and wrestling, you can follow me on Twitter at FlashyJWEvans. Uh, Will, do you have any last things you want to say or talk about before I hit the end button? Tune in next week for more quality memes and happy screams. Ah! Thank you.